Hi, future teacher, and welcome to your preparation guide for passing the Science of Teaching Reading 293 exam, proudly presented by TeacherPreps.com. The Science of Teaching Reading 293 exam assesses your understanding and application of essential reading instruction skills. It features 90 multiple choice questions and one open-ended question, covering topics for effective reading instruction. You will have five hours to complete this exam, demonstrating your depth of knowledge and pedagogical skills in teaching reading to young learners. Ready to start feeling confident about passing your Science of Teaching Reading exam? Give yourself instant access to our detailed study guides, timed practice tests, video tutorials, and AI essay grader, and go from panicked to prepped to passed by signing up at teacherpreps.com. Hello, future teacher, and welcome to your go-to guide for passing your teacher certification exam. In this lesson, you'll learn everything you need to know about providing effective reading instruction, so you'll be totally ready for exam day. Ready to dive in? Let's begin with the foundations of standards-based reading. When you step into your classroom, your mission is crystal clear. Help every student meet those crucial state content standards. Think of these standards as your teaching roadmap, guiding each child towards academic success by the end of the school year. Now, how do we achieve this? Through a balanced and comprehensive English language arts program. Balance is key. Focus more on skills your students struggle with while maintaining a steady pace on others. And remember, comprehensive means covering all skills without overemphasizing any. This dual approach ensures every student gets exactly what they need. Moving on, next, we have differentiating reading instruction. On test day, watch for questions about tailoring instruction to diverse learners. Here's your insider tip. Differentiation is your best friend. Start by assessing what your students know. Use this info to adjust the pace and complexity of your lessons. And don't forget about scaffolds, like graphic organizers or visual aids, to support learning. Remember to look for ways to group students effectively. Whether it's whole class, for uniform lessons, or mixed groups for varied interactions, your strategy should fit the reading level and needs of your students. Now, let's break down the instructional delivery into clear stages so you fully understand effective instructional delivery. First, the orientation. This is your teaser trailer giving students a glimpse of the learning journey ahead. Next up, the presentation. This is where you shine, delivering the content clearly and directly. Follow this with guided practice, where you step in as a coach, observing and nudging your students towards mastery. And finally, independent practice. Think of this as their solo flight, where students apply what they've learned without your direct help. Now, let's talk engaging and motivating strategies. Your secret sauce to a lively classroom. Decorate your space to inspire, use positive reinforcements, and ensure respect and kindness fill every corner of your classroom. When taking your exam, be on the lookout for selected responses that use strategies like book clubs and literature circles to make reading a social, exciting venture. These strategies not only enhance the love for reading, but also build a supportive community among your students. As teachers, we need to promote independent reading. Teach them the five-finger test. Have them read a random page in a book, raising a finger for each unknown word. One or two fingers? Too easy. Four or five? Too tough. But three? Just right. And don't overlook the power of student interests. Use interest inventories to stock your library with topics they love. Structured reading times like sustained silent reading are essential to nurture a habit of reading. And remember, reading doesn't stop at the classroom door. Coordinate with parents to support at-home reading routines. Woo! That was a power-packed session. Now, don't let the momentum stop here. Log into teacherpreps.com to take this reading instruction practice test to see how these strategies come to life in exam questions. Reading Assessment. Hello, future educators. Welcome to your comprehensive guide on reading assessment to help you prepare for your teacher certification exam. Let's begin with an introduction to reading assessments. Assessments in reading are essential for identifying students' current knowledge and skills related to specific standards. They help us create detailed profiles for individual students and the class as a whole, which are invaluable for tracking progress and tailoring instruction throughout the academic year. Three types of reading assessments. One, entry-level assessments. These are conducted before a new lesson or unit to gauge what students already know about the upcoming material. For example, a teacher might use a quick quiz to assess prior knowledge before starting a unit on poetry. 2. Monitoring of progress assessments. Given during the instructional process, 
These assessments help teachers understand who is grasping the material and who might need more support. An example here could be asking students comprehension questions during a read-aloud session to check for understanding. 3. Summative assessments. These are formal and occur after a learning period, such as at the end of a unit or semester, to evaluate overall learning and mastery of content. An end-of-unit test on a novel study is a common example. Note, remember, entry-level and monitoring of progress assessments are informal, while summative assessments are formal. For your exam, you'll want to be prepared to answer questions about alternative assessments for diverse learners. Students with disabilities might have an Individualized Education Program, IEP, or a Section 504 plan, depending on their specific needs. Interpreting the results of standardized tests. Understanding the reliability and validity of tests is crucial. Reliability refers to the consistency of the test results, and validity concerns whether the test accurately measures what it's intended to assess. Standardized exams can have different types of scores. Percentile scores show how a student's performance compares to peers. For instance, a percentile score of 90 means the student performed better than 90% of their peers. Grade equivalent scores. These scores relate a student's performance to an average expectation for different grade levels, like a score of 6.3, indicating 6th grade, 3rd month performance. Stanine scores. These are based on a 9-point scale, where a score of 5 is average and 9 is the highest. A key factor that you will likely see on test day will test your knowledge of using assessment results to guide instruction. The cycle of assessment is ongoing. 1. Administer the assessment. Gather data on student performance. 2. Analyze results. Determine which students have met, exceeded, or are yet to meet the standards. 3. Create profiles. Develop detailed reports on individual and class achievements. 4. Plan instruction. Use the data to inform your teaching strategies, ensuring lessons are differentiated to meet the diverse needs of all students. Now, in order to determine reading levels, we'll use a tool called a running record, where teachers assess a student's reading level by noting patterns of errors during reading, such as graphophonemic errors, confusions in sound letter relationships, e.g. reading bread as beard, semantic errors, mistakes in understanding meanings, like reading house instead of home, syntactic errors, errors in sentence structure, such as using over instead of under. You will likely also see exam questions about reading levels, so keep in mind that the independent level, where a student reads smoothly with minimal help, instructional level, where the student benefits from some teacher guidance, frustration, level, texts that are too challenging even with support. It's highly likely that on your teacher certification exam, you will be asked how to effectively and appropriately communicating assessment results. So let's talk about the different people we share these results with, to students. Provide clear, specific feedback based on standards through daily interactions and periodic conferences. To parents, charge guardians, Share detailed updates on progress and areas for improvement through various communication methods like emails, meetings, and written reports. To school and district personnel, ensure systematic reporting of progress and assessment results to support school-wide and district-wide planning and support. As you prepare for your test, it's essential to have a solid grasp of reading assessments to ensure your success on test day. To truly test your readiness and refine your skills, visit teacherpreps.com and take advantage of our reading assessment practice tests and secure your path to passing your teacher certification exam with flying colors.